What's up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to go over how to create GDPR compliant forms in Webflow. So as a standard, when you create a form in Webflow and you somebody fills it out and sends you an email, the form data gets stored in, on a server in the US, which is protected by the US Privacy Shield, I believe, which for GDPR compliance is not strict enough. So what we need to do is we need to take that form data, stop it from going to the US and send it somewhere where it will be. GDPR compliant. The best way to do this we've found at our studio is to hook it up to FormSpark. This is a really great solution. Um, the pricing is great and the data is then stored in Ireland, which is apparently GDPR compliant, which is great. And if we have a look at the pricing here on FormSpark for free, zero dollars, you get 250 form submissions, which is quite a lot. And then if you want to upgrade, it's just a $25 one-time per purchase for 50,000 submissions, which I feel is isn't more than enough for a lifetime. So there's no kind of monthly fee here. A lot of these solutions do charge you a monthly fee and we found this one is really great. Um, the UI is really good. So when you receive an email into your inbox, it's formatted really nicely. It's really easy to see. The dashboard is great. It's really easy to operate. And then in terms of um, spam prevention, we're gonna configure bot poison, which is quite a simple setup as well. We'll go through it here. And this, the pricing for bot poison, you get 250 verifications per month, which is quite a lot. And then you can see it's quite cheap to go up to the next tiers should you need to. So let's jump into FormSpark, Webflow and Bot Poison and get cracking. So here we are inside FormSpark. I've just signed in with our account, but all you'll need to do is just click, click create an account um, and then you'll be in this workspaces. We currently have one workspace for our website, but you will have an option to create a workspace. So we'll create a workspace and we'll give it a name. So you just call it the name of your website. So we'll say YouTube test account. We'll create this workspace and there we go. And here we go, we're gonna create our first form here, which is sort of the default page you'd land on. And let's say this is YouTube form one, and we could give it a description. This is good for clients. You can say, this is the form on the contact page of your website or something like that. Maybe you've got multiple forms. Maybe you might want, you know, this is the lead gen form on the marketing landing page, for example. Um, we're gonna click Webflow and then create. Here we are, you can see you've got this kind of tabs feature here. So this is where all your submissions will live. You've got some analytics, you can export um, the data as CSV and stuff like that if you need to. And then here we've got our settings. So you can send email notifications to whoever you want. So if you've got multiple members in your team, so you can easily just come here and add multiple people into this account at no additional charge. And you can configure different people to receive notifications for different forms. You can have email threading, which I don't really like, so I'm gonna turn that off. Um, and then you've got Zapier stuff and you've got spam protection down here. So we're gonna hook up bot poison here. And what that's now asking us for is a bot poison secret key, which we will generate shortly. So we'll just make sure we save. And if we have a look at the how to tab, it says set your forms action attribute to the following value. Make sure all of your form elements have a name attribute and they will um, through Webflow. Make sure your form contains a button with the type attribute set to submit and just the submit button in a Webflow form is that. So that's absolutely fine. And you can see here in the code, it's given you some suggestions. All we need to do is copy this form action. We'll come back into our form inside Webflow. We'll set the action to this and we'll change it from get to post. And that's all we need to do there. So we can publish that. Um, and that's literally it, that is FormSpark setup. Now what's gonna happen when somebody submits the form on the website and it's now configured to FormSpark, it's gonna give us a really naff submit um, message, message success, that's the one. So we've just published that, let's refresh our page and let's fill that in some info, Tom at example.com. Right, let's see what happens when we press send. There we go, your form has been submitted. Now this looks jank. So we're gonna just come back. And what we wanna do is we wanna override that functionality, right? So all we're gonna do is we're gonna put a hidden field inside our form. So we're gonna open up our form and we're just gonna put an embed inside our form. I'm just gonna save that. I'm gonna move it above the button. I don't think that really makes a difference. And what we're gonna do here is we just need to put an, an input basically that is a redirect. 
So I've got a little bit of code here. So input, the type is hidden. The name is a redirect, so it's telling you what happens. We're going to redirect this form. What's the value? This is where we're going to redirect it to. So we can copy this, come back into Webflow. We'll just paste it in here. I'll zoom in a little bit. And we need to, therefore, we need to have a design for a thank you page or a sent page. So we have got one here. So we can just grab this URL here. So this is the one that we've created. And we'll just paste this in here. So now we're saying when somebody submits this form, we're going to redirect you to this page. We're going to press save. We're going to publish. So now when we submit this form, it should, in theory, redirect. There we go, woohoo, message sent. And then, you know, thanks for your email, blah, blah, blah. You can obviously customize this as much as you like, back to home. So we're now set up. If we have a look inside FormSpark now, here we go, we've got our two submissions that came through. You can see this looks great and you can kind of select these and delete them or do whatever we need to. So FormSpark is set up. Next step is to protect it by bot poison. So here we are inside uh, the FormSpark documentation under the bot poison section. And it says go to botpoison.com slash start, create a new configuration and then integrate the public key on your website. And there's the link to instructions. So. Once you've created an account, there'll be a button to create a configuration. We'll call this YouTube test. You would put in the name of your website. We press create, and that's all we needed to do. We've now got a public key and a secret key. So it said, um, did we, we opened this new tab. Here we go. So this is the link for integrating the public key on your website. So basically it says import the browser script. So that's this one. So what we want to do is we want to put that in the, the settings of our project into the head tag. So if we come to settings, custom code, and we'll just paste that in there. That looks good to me. And we'll come back to designer. And then it says, add your public key to the data bot poison public key attribute. So this is on side the, in the form. So you can see here, we've got form with the action set to, we know we've overridden that with form spark. And then it says, give it an attribute of this, and then your public key would be the value. So if we come back to Webflow, we grab our form. So you could, I think you can do this on the form or the inner wrapper of the form. I always do it on this form section here where we put the action. We'll go custom attributes and zoom in a little bit for you. There's the thing and we'll just type this for now and we'll come and grab our public key. It says put the public key there, bot poison public key. Here we go. So we'll just come in here and we will add the public key done we can publish that and then we copy the secret key oh copy and what does it say to do it says it doesn't say anything else there but we can come back here so we've integrated the public key on our website that's done copy the secret key open form spark in form settings select bot, bot poison and paste the secret key in so we come back to form spark settings on this youtube form we come down, we're going to put in bot poison, and now we can put in the secret key, press save, and we are done, guys. The form is now configured. It redirects to a custom page. Lovely. And I will put a link to that lovely Lottie that you see here because we didn't create this Lottie. We found this on Lottie files and we customized it. So I'll put a link in the description to the person who created that because it's just a lovely animation. And that's it. Your forms are now GDPR compliant. I always recommend kind of saving these instructions somewhere quick and easy for, you know, future reference. We put all of our stuff in Notion. Um, any questions, give us a shout in the comments and have a wonderful day. Happy designing and web flowing.